Here's Hyper Voice, which Magmorta tried to use to take out Electivire in the previous round, and it worked! And down goes Electivire! Welcome to the final of Metromania Season 11. It has been a long road to get here, but here we are. We are ready to see two teams face off for the title of Metromania Season 11 Champion. Stick around till the end of the video for a lovely announcement as well regarding the future of Metromania. But let's get into it as Togekiss and Togepi take on Magmorta and Magby. So here we go, the final of Season 11. And before anyone comments it, because y'all always do, no, I can never ever do a Metromania season that has all the previous champions in because we don't have a game that has Mega Evolution and Galarian Pokemon in, so it's just impossible. We see Magmorta start things off with a drop kick on Togepi and drops the attack of Togepi Y1 stage after a little cheeky bit of damage there. We see Magby starting off with tea time, getting a little bit hungry up in here, so everybody's going to eat their held berries. Well, that's really just Magmorta and Togekiss because they're the only ones holding held berries. So completely pointless for Togekiss. Kiss. Gave Magmorta one PP back for what it's worth. Haha, <laughs> PP, very funny. Here is Togekiss, though, who's going to go for Sweet Kiss to start things off. It's avoided by Magby, and now it's over to Togepi to try and make up for that error. We see Flying Press, which is going to land on, I believe, Magmorta there for a little bit of chip damage there. A little bit of cheeky damage to start things off. Togepi's hustle ability. Uh, pay, paying dividends? That's the word, isn't it? Wait, does Togepi have Hustle as its primary ability? I'm pretty sure it does. Pretty sure I'm right there. Magby starts things off with Torment for uh, turn two, meaning that Togekiss can use Metronome this turn, but won't be able to use it on the next turn. We'll have to struggle, and that recoil damage is deadly. We see Moonlight from Magmorta going to restore its HP back up to maximum, because it's definitely at more than half health. So <laughs> the damage from Togepi from the previous turn completely eradicated completely negated and now Togekiss is gonna go for double kick gonna land two swift hits on Magby there not a great deal of damage but the flame body ability of Magby coming into play there so now Togekiss is burned and you see the difference that's the perfect example of how detrimental a burn is because you see how little damage the second hit of that double uh, double kick did to Magby there. We see cut from Togepi, not a great deal of damage there, chipping away at Magmorta, and there is the burn chipping away at Togekiss. So not looking good for Togepi and Togekiss right now as they try and battle Magby and Magmorta for the title of Metromania Season 11 Champion. Here comes Magby though with a Fury Attack Landing on Togekiss there, barely any damage though. Wow, two hits and you could barely tell. The needle barely moved. But here's Magmorta now going for Spatial. Ren doesn't affect Togepi because it's, a, it's a, a dragon type move. There's the struggle from Togekiss, barely any damage, but 25% of its max HP as recoil damage there. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy Metromania. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything on this lovely channel. Grassy Glide, not very effective from Togepi onto Magmorta there. Not a great deal of damage once again. Togekiss suffering the burn damage as well. The Togekiss and Togepi team really need to pull their fingers out right now. They need to pull it out the bag if they're going to secure a victory in this first round. Magby though is going to go for Air Slash, maybe hoping to flinch one of its opponents. It's going to land on Togekiss there for a little bit of chip damage, bringing it down to less than half its max HP. And now we're on to Magmorta, who's going to go for Pin Missile, which will be not very effective. Let's see how many hits it gets, though. It gets the one hit, guaranteed to get the second hit. We get a third. Are we getting a fourth? We are. Do we get the Quinfecta? We do. Five out of five hits from Magmorta with that pin missile. Even if it's not very effective, it still did a decent amount of damage in the long run. And here's Togekiss with Brine, which will be super effective. Onto Magby there. Massive damage, bringing Magby very, very close to the danger zone. That's the kind of move that Togekiss and Togepi need to pull out of the bag right now. Here's a Leaf Storm. That's not going to be very effective. From Togepi onto Magby, definitely not enough to take it down. Does put it in the danger zone, but drops the special attack of Togepi by two stages. And there's more burn damage onto Togekiss. So a better round, I guess, for Togepi and Togekiss, but still a very difficult situation that they're in right now. Here comes Magby once again with clear smog, looking to, I guess, remove stat changes. On Togepi, super effective because it's a poison type move, but does that mean that it removes any negative stat changes? I can never remember. Let me know in the comments. I know it removes the positive ones. Clanging Scales doesn't affect Togekiss or Togepi, so Magmorta wasted its turn, but at least it survived getting a, uh, 
a defense drop. There is the struggle, barely damaging Magmorta at all, but putting Togekiss in the danger zone because of that recoil damage. We see Metal Burst from Togepi, who's already been attacked, so it's going to do one and a half times damage. Lands on the Magby and takes Magby down, the first casualty of this Metromania final. There's the burn damage on Togekiss. How much did that do? It's not quite defeated yet, but it's very, very close. Magmorta still with a lot of HP, though. There's definitely a lot of work to do yet. If Togekiss and Togepi hope to take down Magmorta, here's Magnetic Flux. That is going to fail. Now Togekiss has an opportunity. It's, it's not long for this world because of that burn. Goes for a Thunderbolt which of course is a special attack, so not affected by the burn. Decent amount of damage there. Doesn't get the paralysis on Magmorta though, which is going to uh, be a problem for Togepi, to be honest. Who goes for Waterfall though. That's super effective with that Hustle Boost as well. Does a decent chunk of damage there. Magmorta now a little bit worried. Togekiss is hurt by the burn and goes down. So Togepi one-on-one -on -one right now with Magmorta but in a much better position. They're in a much more of an even position than they were before. But the paralysis from the Thunderbolt would have come in very handy for Togepi. Here is Magmorta with Dream Eater. That's going to fail because Togepi is wide awake. So now Togepi has an opportunity to capitalize on that mistake. And it's going to go for Rock Smash, maybe hoping to lower the defense of Magmorta there. Puts it into the danger zone, gets the defense drop. So Togepi could be one move away from getting the 1-0 in this final. Let's see what happens. Magmorta, though, is ready and raring to go, and it's going to go for Incinerate, which will have same type attack bonus behind it. Will it take down Togepi? It does. Round one to Magby and Magmorta. Let's hear from the sponsors. I think I can hear old people f***ing outside my house. That's really weird. Please don't do that outside my house. Old people. <laughs> Never mind that, it's time for me to tell you to use code ACE to save money on G Fuel! G Fuel is a wonderful energy formula with zero sugar and barely any calories and just a whole bunch of lovely, wonderful, wonderful flavours like the lovely watermelon that I'm drinking right now. And what's more, you can use code ACE to save yourself at least 10% off G Fuel. And how wonderful is that? It helps the channel out as well. Isn't that amazing? So make sure you use code ACE whenever you order G Fuel over at gfuel.com. Remember though, it's for over 18s only because children don't need caffeine because good lord, they're irritating as it is. And of course, because it contains caffeine, just drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. So here we are with round two, Magmorta and Magby leading one to zero as Togepi and Togekiss have a very important round here because Magmorta and Magby only need to win this battle to become the champions. And realistically, oh, that fire spin would have been an absolutely great move by Magby if it had landed. And realistically, Togepi and Togekiss want to go all the way. Everybody wants to go all the way in Metromania as we see the ghost type being added to, uh, to Togekiss there, which will reduce its dark type resistance and make it weak to ghost type moves. We see Gunk Shot from Togekiss onto, I believe, Magby. Onto Magby there. Big chunk of damage as well. Gets the poison, puts Magby on a timer. That's a great first move there. Gunk Shot, very, very useful in Metromania. And now we see Togepi getting ready with the gear grind. Not very effective, but avoided by Magby anyway. And there's the poison damage on Magby. Magby already, after turn one, is already at less than 50% of its max HP. Like I say, Tokus and Dokupi want to go all the way, but they have to win this battle if they want to keep that dream alive. We see Slam from Magmorta onto Togepi for big damage. Magmorta wants to end this quickly, get that 2-0 victory, send it to a pride round. Could you imagine? We've never ended Metromania on a pride round, I don't think. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong. There's the draining kiss from Togekiss. It's not very effective on Magby. Oh wait, oh, sorry, it's uh, from Magby to Togekiss, I should say. So it heals up Magby. You're an idiot, Liam. Here we see Slam from Togekiss, avoided by Magmorta, and now Togepi Ready to go once again. It goes for triple kick. Avoided by Magby. Magby getting very lucky there. But even after draining, after that draining kiss, it is going to have its HP reduced right back down to less than half of max. But yeah, I don't think we've ever had... We've never had a pride round at the end of Metromania so far. But touch wood, who knows? This could be the one. If Magby and Magmorta have their way, I believe Whirlpool was avoided there. And Magic Powder 
from Magby onto Togepi, making it into a pure psychic type Pokemon. That's going to be very interesting going forward. Here we see Togekiss, though, ready to go with Dive, which will be super effective on Magby or Magmortar, whichever opponent. It looks like it's going to be on Magby from that angle just there, but I, I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. You guys in the comments love to let me know. And takedown from Togepi is going to land on Magby. Of course, Flame Body coming into... I was going to say, of course, recoil damage from that takedown will be applied to Togepi, but also the burn, halving Togepi's attack stat. There's the poison damage sapping away at Magby, and there's the burn damage slowly withering Togepi's health down. Togepi needs to stick to special attacks, really, at this point, unless it can conjure up some aromatherapy or something to get rid of that burn. Here comes Magby, though, with Luster Purge, avoided by Togekiss, who's still underwater on this grassy field. Don't know how that works. And here's Magmore with a shockwave avoided by Togekiss. So a free turn for Togekiss and Togepi. Gets the dive on Magby and knocks out Magby. I think that was a mistake though because that should have been used on Magmortar who has a lot more HP left. Magby was going to be knocked out in a couple of turns anyway because of that poison. Here's try attack from Togepi though. Maybe looking to freeze. I don't think you can freeze fire types. I can't quite remember. I'm pretty sure they thaw out instantly if they use a fire type move but... I'm pretty sure they can't be frozen anymore. Oh, that's another one for the comment section to correct me on. Let's go for that. Hoping to freeze or paralyze or... Um, what's the other one? You can't burn because it's... Uh, what do you call it? A fire type. That's it. I had a brain fart moment. The Fury attack missed regardless. Focus Blast is going to land, though, from Togekiss onto Magmortar there for a big chunk of damage. Magmortar now at less than half its max HP. Over to Togepi. What's Togepi got in mind here? Togepi with the Body Slam. Is it going to land and get the Paralysis on the Magmortar there? No Paralysis. That's unfortunate for Togepi, who is hurt by the burn once again. So Magmortar still very much in this, very much unhindered at the moment. As we start off the next turn, what's Magmortar going to do? It's going to go for Air Slash, avoided by Togepi. That's unfortunate. Air Slash missing is a very, a very unfortunate moment. We see Splash from Togekiss, though, wasting its turn. Don't know how smart this idea is. And now it's over to Togepi once again. Is Togepi also going to waste its turn? It's going to go for Drill Peck, going straight on the uh, physical offensive still. Doesn't do a lot of damage because of Togepi's burn, which then withers away at its HP once again. So Magmortar still with another opportunity to get that 2-0 victory, to take out both its opponents. Imagine if it threw in a Rock Slide or something right now. That would probably end things. Goes for a Seed Bomb onto which opponent? Onto Tokyo, so it's not very effective. Would have been neutral damage to Togepi. So a bad play there. Here comes Togekiss though. How will it respond? It's going to go for Bolt Strike. And how much damage will this deal? Here we see the Bolt Strike on Magmortar. Big damage. Not enough to take it down though. It's still got a slither of HP left. Can Togepi secure that equalizer? It's going to go for Bug Bite. It's not very effective, but will it be just enough? It is. Down goes Magmortar, and this is one apiece. We are not going to a Pride round. We are going to a Decider round. Either Magmortar or Magby or Togekiss or Togepi. If they win this round, they secure the victory and the grand final title of champion for their team. What on earth am I saying? You get the gist. It's Metromania. You know the deal by now. Here comes a guard split to start things off from Magmorta. Sharing its guard with Togepi. Don't know how wise that was, but I guess we'll see going forward. Magby is going to start this final round off with Dual Chop. Doesn't affect Togepi or Togekiss. Big mistake there. Togekiss's first move of this round is going to be Payback. Moving after its opponent, so I believe it's going to be powered up onto Magby for great damage there. A good, like quarter if not a third of Magby's HP gone. We see Sucker Punch from Togepi that is going to fail so unfortunately there, there were some mistakes that round on both sides but uh, now we have Magmorta starting off the next turn. Let's see if it does a little bit better here. Going to go for Tickle. I mean sure start off with a few stat drops. Not a bad shot. I believe that lowers attack and defense could be wrong. Attack and defense. There you go. Never doubt yourself unless you actually know you're wrong and then doubt yourself. Here's Magby who's going to go for Axel Rock which would be super effective on Tokus and it is on Tokus so well done there. Gets a decent chunk of damage off for saying it's Axel Rock from a Magby and now we see Tokus with the Wood Hammer. That's not going to be very effective and does come with a little bit of recoil damage there. So a, a decent amount of chip damage to Magmorta but a better move could have been selected there and now Togepi comes in. Togepi is going to fire off a Psycho Cut. Now, there's a great choice of move. And that's going to land on Magby. 
Just a little bit of chip damage, not a massive amount as past Liam needs to remember to stop watching videos on his phone and press the button so that these Pokemon actually do things. This is how I commentate these live for the first time because I, when I'm recording these, I am not paying attention to these battles. Here we see Aqua Jet from Magmortar onto Togepi for a good amount of damage. Magby getting ready, gearing itself off with that metronome and it's going to go for Terrain Pulse, but there's no terrain in effect so it is just going to be the basic form of Terrain Pulse there for a little chip away at Togepi. And now Togekiss is going to come in with the response, going for Grassy Glide. That won't be very effective on the Fire-type Magby, but does bring it down to less than half its max HP, which does put that finish line a little bit closer for the Togepi and Togekiss team. Vital Spirit from Magmorta is going to prevent Togepi's Yawn from taking effect. So... Very, very much that hidden ability paying dividends right there. Now it's over to Magby to start the next turn off. Magby is going to go for Twister, which doesn't affect Togekiss or Togepi because it's a dragon type move. So another mistake in this final round. We see Shadow Force from Magmortar going to vanish instantly. Now remember... The, uh, the trick or treat from the previous turn no longer matters because it, it, you know, it was the previous round. So Togekiss is not a ghost type at this point. We see withdraw from Togekiss wants to protect itself a little bit. Wants to, uh, you know, make sure its defense is up by one stage. So great play right there just in case it is the target of that shadow force. And now we see Togepi with a burn up but it doesn't have the fire type so it can't use burn up. If Magby or Magmortar would have been using that, that would have been very, very interesting. And now we see Magby with the Metro and we know what Magmortar is going to do this round but Magby is going to go for gear grind which will be super effective onto Togekiss there each move each turn of a uh, gear grind there is quite effective each hit does a decent chunk of damage there brings Toga uh, Kiss down to less than half its max HP here's the shadow force from Magmortar for a big chunk of damage there and now Togekiss gets the chance to retaliate Togekiss is going to go for cosmic power and increase its defense by another stage and it's special defense, so it's really playing defensively here. It really wants to make sure that it reduces the amount of damage it's going to take going forward, which should help it get closer and closer to that victory. We see a false swipe from Togepi onto Magmortar there for a tiny bit of damage, barely, barely moving the HP bar there. Magmortar still has a lot of its HP left though, so it really needs dealing with. Here comes Magby with a double edge. Magby means business right now. Double edge onto Togepi, putting it right down into the danger zone. Little bit of recoil damage there to Magby. And now over to Magmortar. What is it going to do here? It's going to go for Mist Ball. And that is going to land on the Togepi, I believe. How much damage? It's enough to take down Togepi. It's all up to Togekiss now to take the victory for its team. Otherwise, it goes to Magby and Magmortar. Togekiss is going to go for Mega Kick. It's avoided by Magby. So now Magby and Magmortar have an opportunity to close out this battle. Take the title. What is going to happen? Here's Magmortar getting itself prepared with that Metronome, and it's going to go for Double Edge of its own. How much is that going to do to Togekiss, especially with those defense boosts? Puts it in the danger zone. You can't see the HP bar because I'm cheeky, but you heard the tone. And now Magby is going to go for Conversion and change itself to a Normal type. That's a strange choice there. We know it's Normal type because the only move it knows is Metronome, which is a Normal type move for those wondering how I predicted the future. And now Togekiss is going to go for Storm Throw, which is super effective guaranteed critical hit as well so down goes magby it's down to just magmortar and um togekiss there wow this really could go either way but magmortar has a lot more hp than togekiss that much is definitely true so magmortar only needs to hit one move really on togekiss to secure the victory goes for rest but vital spirit means that it won't fall asleep and does not get the benefit of rest restoring its hp so this is an opening that togekiss can capitalize on it's gonna go for liquidation which is going to be super effective on magmortar for some big damage there bringing magmortar down to less than half its max hp does not get the defense drop but my word toki is very much showing that it's still in this competition Magmortar is ready though, goes for Thunder Punch, which will be super effective on Togekiss. Is this the finisher? It is! Togekiss is going down! The victors and your Season 11 Metromania champions are Magmortar and Magby. That was absolutely incredible. What a journey they've had and what a fantastic final that was. Now, stay tuned because we have an announcement about Metromania coming up right about now. Now then, oh, okay, so first things first is don't worry, there's no cancellation or anything like that. Metromania is not cancelled. So just for anyone that was worrying, 
it ain't that. But for those that have been watching my Twitch streams for a long time, they will know that I've been debating about this for a long time. I've been weighing up the pros, weighing up the cons, and I want to make Metromania a yearly event. I want Metromania to be something that we can all get hyped about, we can all start looking forward to and being like, right, oh my god, it's Metromania season, let's go, let's get excited. So it does mean that yes, there won't technically be Metromania for a little while, but it'll be back and better than ever on December 25th of this year, which is Christmas Day, so I'm giving you Metromania for Christmas, that's pretty banging. And the reason that season 12 is going to start on that particular date is because 14 weeks after that, so the 15th episode of that season, will be the weekend of WrestleMania, which is where we got the name from. And I think that's kind of cool that Metromania ends the same weekend that we experienced WrestleMania. I just think it's a nice hype thing to tie it all together, and it means it's a brilliant time to be able to do it once a year and have it as one big really cool event. I think it will generate a little bit more hype around Metromania, make it a bit more interesting, a little bit more exciting. It gives us time in between for me to talk to you guys and find out what kind of theme you guys want to see. We can sort of work on that together. Uh, maybe, hopefully I can get some updated graphics for it because I think it's looking a bit tired as well. Mm. And that also obviously frees us up a day a week in the meantime for us to maybe fit in another WTF Moments, which is my favourite series and that I really, really like making and I want to be able to get through a little bit faster. I think personally, that's the best way about it because it keeps Metromania interesting without oversaturating it because I think that's the big problem with doing Metromania in doing 15 episodes a season, 11 seasons back to back. That's 165 episodes. I feel like we've oversaturated it a little bit and I want it to have a bit more of its luster back, a little bit more of its like wow factor. So I feel like Metromania once a year is the best way to go and it's going to be starting on December 25th 2021. So get excited for season 12. Get excited for more WTF in the meantime. If you're not a fan of WTF, soz, because I really like making it. Like, it's my favorite thing to do and it fills me with loads of joy. And of course, don't worry, Siri battles are staying exactly where they are because I love Siri battles so much as well. I love Metromania. Like, don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite things I've ever made, Metromania. But I feel like it just needs to not be oversaturated as it is. It needs to be a little bit more... It, the kind of content that it is just needs to be a little bit more spread out, I reckon. So I'm going with this. Let's see how it works. And thank you for supporting me. If this is the last time I ever hear from you because you're like, oh, screw this guy. I like Metromania and I can't wait till December. So I'm out, which technically means I don't get any Metromania because then I'm not going to watch it when it is out, which would be a really silly thing to do. But if that's you're, if you're that way inclined, by all means, bye-bye. Thanks for being here anyway. In the meantime, like, thanks for watching everything so far. If you're someone who's like Liam, I love your content. Do what makes you happy, and I really want to see you succeed and go far. And I'm just happy to see Metromania be back in December until April. Well, I think, yeah, it'll run from December to, like, April, I think, which is pretty cool. Then thanks for sticking around as well. I really appreciate you. I've dreaded talking about this. I've been umming and ahhing for weeks. And do you know what? It's not so bad. I feel quite, that felt quite cathartic to let that out and just address the elephant in the room, which is I think Metromania is a little bit oversaturated. I want it to be a bit more special. And I think having it as a yearly event is a really cool thing that we can all look forward to together as a channel, as a community. And I think that's really cool. And if you don't like it, so it's, I'm, I'm doing it when I want to do it. And that's the end of this year. <laughs> but yes, as always, thank you for making season 11 such a wonderful season because it was absolutely amazing. And I want season 12, when it does come around, to be even better than this one. So I've got to really go to the idea pool, really pull some things out of the bag, and I'm just really excited. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. And until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.